a separate university for Telugu speaking people. That's how this university was established on April 26, 1926. The second vice chancellor of this university was uh, Dr. Sarita Radhakrishnan, who subsequently became the first vice president of the Indian Republic, and the second president of the state nation. The highest position of this university, and they brought name and fame to this great university. The present vice president of India, Sri Vekai Nandigaru, also is the alumnus of this university, particularly he is from law department. This is the only university which he contributed to vice presidents to this great nation, Dr. Sarifal Radhakrishnan and Sri Vekai Nadia. And many great personalities serve this university, like Sir C. V. Raman, a Nobel laureate in physics. Similarly, they are proud alumni, and many luminaries who occupied their highest positions in their respective fields have been the alumni of this great university. That's how Andhra University has a great legacy, and as part of these endowment lectures today, we have been organizing this endowment lecture, and we are very grateful to Honorable Justice Lao Nageswara Garu for recently essay this occasion and delivering the endowment lecture on the name of Professor S. Frank Tram. With these few remarks, now I request <laughs> Professor Suri Prakash Rao, Principal of at B. R. Ambedkar College of Law, to introduce the speaker to the audience. Thank you. Uh, good morning to all of you. Honorable Justice Lao Nageshwar Garu, Judge Supreme Court of India, who is the Nageshwar Garu, uh, Registrar, Professor Ramana Mahishwar Garu, Dignitaries, NYTs, uh, Student Friends, Teaching Fraternity, uh, Law Students of various colleges, a very warm welcome to this endowment lecture. Actually, after having 25 years uh, labs, we are organizing this endowment lecture again in 2018. The last endowment lecture on S. Venkatraman uh, endowment lecture was delivered by Professor B. S. Murthy, uh, a renowned international law scholar, international law jurist. And previously, Professor S. Venkatraman Endowment lectures were delivered by uh, Honorable Justice Bengalar Jaram Mohan Reddy uh, on Indian Federalism and Justice K. Ramaswamy, who, who were the former judges of Indian Supreme Court. Uh, Justice K. Ramaswamy delivered a lecture on equality. So actually, as far as Venkatraman is concerned, he is the first principal of Arts Commerce Law uh, of Andhra University and he is an authority on Hindu law and he is praised for his remembrance. Even 100 students are there in the class. He will uh, name each and every student by name. So it is a remarkable uh, uh, memory power of such gigantic personality. And Professor S. Venkatraman uh, made several students uh, as important uh, judges and uh, important persons in the public life. So in the name of Professor S. Raman, Endowment Lecture was instituted by his admirers and students and well-wishers. So from then onwards, Amara University is organizing this Endowment Lecture in the name of S. Raman. Uh, actually, this year, when we contacted uh, Justice Lao Nageshwaragaru, to deliver the lecture, he readily accepted in spite of his uh, busy schedule. And as far as topic is concerned, uh, he suggested me you select a specific topic so that I can uh, deliver a lecture which is useful uh, to the law students. So accordingly, we selected the topic dynamics of uh, life, liberty, privacy, and law. 
Prabhuji readily accepted to deliver, for which uh, I express my thanks to Honorable Justice. As far as the theme is concerned, as we all know, uh, the uh, democracy is not mere the form of government, it is a way of life. Indian democracy is condemned by day by day by the people for the last uh, uh, century so that. And as far as the making of the Indian constitution is concerned, uh, when B. N. Rao, Bharatiya Narasimha Rao, the constitutional advisor, uh, uh, visited uh, different countries on behalf of the drafting committee to get the suggestions. Justice Frank Potter, an academician turned judge, gave constitutional advisor to the drafting committee that uh, there were no restrictions as far as freedoms are concerned in, under the under American constitution so that you specify the restrictions. Accordingly, Article 19 was uh, inserted in the constitution, restrictions were incorporated as far as system. So instead of due process, you uh, take this procedure established by law. So as far as Article 21 is concerned, 21 says that no person shall be deprived of his life or personal liberty except the procedure established by law. So the life is interpreted by the Supreme Court in such a way, it is not mere annual existence. And life is understood by the Supreme Court as it is a decent life, life with human dignity, life with livelihood. So, accordingly, Article 21 was widened in such an extent. So, life includes everything. Uh, decent death also, life includes decent death. As far as um, procedure, uh, uh, liberty is concerned, from Gopalan to Managa, we have uh, some type of restricted interpretation by the Supreme Court. Uh, as far as uh, the liberty was, as far as uh, the, that aspect is concerned, uh, liberty was widened. Then, uh, the law is not any draconian law, it is a just law, fair law and reasonable law. And procedure is also uh, just procedure, reasonable procedure and uh, uh, so accordingly the scope of Article 21 was widened in such a way. So the present topic is so dynamic, so our uh, justice accepted to uh, give a lecture on this. So as far as the profile of justice and Nagesh Rao is concerned, uh, at the time of his elevation to uh, Supreme Court judgeship, he has a uh, rolling practice and uh, actually he was born on August, uh, sorry, 8th, July, uh, 8th June 1957 at Cherala, Prakashan District, Andhra Pradesh. He did his become here from Nagarjuna University, Guntur, Andhra Pradesh. He enrolled as an advocate. On 29th July 1982 at Bar Council of Andhra Pradesh, from July 1982 to January 1984, practiced at the District Court, Guntur, Andhra Pradesh. From January 1985 to December 1994, he practiced at the High Court of Andhra Pradesh, Hyderabad. From January 1995 to May 2016, he practiced at the Supreme Court of India. He was designated as a senior advocate by the Andhra Pradesh High Court in December 2000. He served as additional solicitor general of India from August 2003 to May 2004 and again from to, uh, 26th August 2013 to 18th December 2014 and again try, uh, third time also he was uh, uh, made as additional solicitor general. Then he was appointed as judge of the Supreme Court of India on 13th May 2016. Actually, he has an illustrious life as an advocate. Uh, his advocate life is a model to each and every uh, law student. Actually, when I searched this website, uh, he was one of the highest uh, uh, paid lawyers in the country uh, at the time of his elevation. After leaving his, uh, leaving his entire uh, practice, he accepted to be the judge to 